Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Extra virgin olive oil. Just like me, a beautiful, untouched flower. I wish. To be honest, I'm not... I, I know this is olive oil, alright, but... Just to talk about olives. I do not like olives, and it is not a lack of trying. I swear, like, every year... I, I, I'm like, you know what? You know, stuff like tomatoes and... Like, a few things that you, you tend to not like when you're younger that, that, like, if you embrace when you're older, you might like it. And every single time I try an olive, I'm, I'm just like, come on. Embrace the flavor, and it's just awful every time. Um, so, fun fact about me. Uh, so, yeah, EVOO. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what makes extra virgin olive oil different from virgin olive oil. Different from olive oil. Let's do it. My name is Connor, by the way. We're in Kalamata in the Peloponnese, Greece. This region produces what is considered to be the finest olive oil in the world. It's made from this olive right here, the Koronaki. It is a very small olive, but also very... Sorry, this video has a strange audio range. ...rich and aromatic. Thanks to a cold destruction, a very small olive, but also very rich and aromatic. Thanks to a cold destruction and the slow fermentation process, Koroneki olive oil tastes like no other, a true nectar of the gods. This is the land of ancient myths and heroes, after all. This olive oil is considered a very bitter, very spicy olive oil, very intense, grassy, fruity, and that is what makes Koroneki very special. Like the aromas of that and the spiciness, the intense character it has. This region has a mild Mediterranean climate with extended periods of sunshine, which makes it the ideal home for olive groves. Koroneki olives are harvested from late October until late January. The best olive oil is considered to be the one extracted from the olives harvested in the first three weeks. When they're bright uh, green. Question, Mediterranean climate, that, that's considered the sort of like ideal climate in the world for people, right? Like it's... The winters aren't too cold, the summers aren't too hot. And um, I know there are certain places, only a few places around the world that have, obviously a lot of, you know, mostly around the Mediterranean. But then there's also a Mediterranean climate I know in, I think, Northwest Pacific Coast in the U.S. And some parts of Patagonia and some parts like near Adelaide at the bottom of Australia. Early harvest olive oil is more nutritious. It is rich in polyphenols and antioxidants, which make the flavor fresher and more intense. As the olives ripen, they do not really get any bigger, but they will get darker. These ripe olives contain more oil than the green ones and will give a larger yield, but their oil has a milder flavor. To preserve the nutrients inside the Koroneki olive, the harvest happens as fast as possible. There are two methods. One is to shake the olives out of the tree with these electric sticks. Now they just brush the olives. The Sorry. Olives, the olive fall and they do not hurt the tree. And it's only the olives that are ready to fall that actually come, come down. They no? do everything. So basically they go through the tree. Some of them are more ripe, some of them are more green. We need them both. We need them both to be harvested. All of them. Uh, this one. Interesting. Yeah. Whoa, and so I, oh, okay. Need to do this job with goggles or something. Oh, that, <laughs> it's, uh, let's see. Another I can map. see the vibration on the hand. That seems like it would, like if you ever have like a shaky lawnmower after a while, that shaking can. is to prune all the inside branches and then collect the olives with the help of this machine, which filters out the leaves. So the olives fill inside There's the olives side. falling. Be careful, be careful. It's raining olives. Yeah, it's raining olives. <laughs> Bravo, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With both methods, the olives fall into a net, which is made of breathable material to avoid compressing the olives. The net is then closed and the more stubborn branches and leaves are taken out by hand. Like fast, fast. It's like brassing like them. A... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so how many olives do you put in one sack? 50 kilos of olives in one sack. Whoa. And from that you get uh, 10 kilos of olive oil. 
Okay, scratch the olive, squeeze it to find the olive oil inside. Oh. Now look, this is the olive oil. Oh, look. It's actually whiter, yeah, of yeah. course, because it's mixed with some pulp, yeah. And smell it. Fresh. Nice. This is the fresh grass that we're looking for in the fresh mm. olive oil. Exactly that sensation, that you just have crushed the olive and find the aroma. Oh, somewhere. yeah, there's so much juice inside yeah. the olive itself. Mm. Can we taste it? <laughs> no, they're very bitter. They are. <laughs> they are very bitter. No, they're very That's bitter. Nice. The Koroneki olive has a sister, Kalamata. Both varieties are important for the life of the olive grove. This is really good for but the These Polonaise. have more juice but less no, flavor. Also, think of tradition. People produced what they needed for the house. So they needed both Kalamata olives and olive oil. Because of their bitterness, Kalamata olives are not turned into olive oil. They are instead used as stable olives and go through a debittering process. They Interesting. So the olives I'm used to are either black olives or green olives. Black olives are the almost like blueberry size kind of ones, which I'm not a fan of either. And then there are the green ones that are stuffed with that uh, like red pepper thing. Cured in brine, then I'm not a fan of and either. then stored in jars with Koroneki olive oil. Okay, we have more than 2,000 olive trees. Uh, some of them are 1,000 years old. We are very connected with the olive trees. Yeah. Every family has 200 1, trees, 300 trees. It is their olive oil for the family, even though they are not farmers. And it's also for them an extra income. Together with extracting the oil from her family's groves, Dimitra will usually work with local families to extract their own oil. Her mill is actually paid in olive oil by these families, as it keeps 8% of the production. More than a thousand sacks arrive every day during peak harvest at Dimitra's mill. The oil is extracted within 24 hours. Aiden, olive After oil. this machine blows the leaves out, the olives are washed. This is an important step to remove any soil that may be in the olives that will give the oil an earthy taste. There is also a scale here to weigh the olives and see what percentage of olive oil is extracted from them. We need to weigh the olives to see how many olives every family has brought. Usually for the Koroneki variety, when it's early harvest, it's about 14%. 14%. When it's mid-season, it's about 20%. The olives, including the pits, are ground into a paste. The paste ferments and spins for a few minutes to bring out the aromas of the Koroneki olive. Then, the temperature cools down really fast to be able to extract the oil. Cold extraction means that the, olives, the olive oil is produced with olives less than 28 degrees. Celsius. Yes. Okay. Because otherwise... You so what's that, guys? 28 degrees... Or you would use uh, with olives less than 28 degrees. 28 degrees. So that's like... Eighty? No, seventy. Is that like eighty degrees? Celsius. Yeah. Okay. Because otherwise you would uh, you would cook basically the... Exactly. Yeah, you the burn the olive oil. Yeah, yeah. Now we extract the olive oil, so basically we don't press the olives. Uh, press is open air. Yeah. So now here we don't want any oxygen. Press is human touch. We don't want that. The extraction of the olive oil happens in this machine here in just 15 minutes. It works like a big centrifuge to separate the solids, like the paste, the pit and the flesh, from the liquid, which is our olive oil. The process is very fast. From their arrival, olives are turned into oil in less than 40 So guys, a centrifuge is just something, it is you put something in, uh, something that spins rapidly, and so the heavier, more massive objects go out towards the sides and the less dense parts are in the middle. The process is very fast. From their arrival, olives are turned into oil in less than 45 minutes. The liquid gold that comes out is extra virgin olive oil, the finest grade in the family of olive oils. Extra virgin means that the cold extraction has preserved all the antioxidants and polyphenols present in the Koroneki olive, like cheese made with raw milk. Olive oil is... Okay, so by saying by virgin, by extra virgin, it just means more of the original olive essence is still in it. It's also measured by a parameter called... That makes CSD. sense. For extra virgin, the free acidity must be 0.8% or less, meaning that less than 0.8% of the fatty acids normally present in olive oil have been damaged, either in production or storage. 
Extra virgin olive oil is more nutritious but also has a shorter shelf life compared to other grades. We have the liquids and now we have to separate the liquids. There is some water that's naturally inside the olive oil. Again, it's a second centrifugation. At this time, it's vertical. Olive oil is light, goes on the surface. Water is heavy, goes down. And like this, naturally, they are separated. Yeah. Olive oil is stored in 300 ton stainless steel tanks. When not full, the tanks are filled with nitrogen. In fact, light, oxygen and temperature are the worst enemies of olive oil. Unlike wine, there is no such thing as aging in the bottle. Olive oil is only bottled when needed. Demetrius Mill produces more than 600 tanks of olive oil every year. This is my office. <laughs> Olive this, mill, yeah, it's the traditional mill. olive oil mill. It was in 1904 that the olive oil mill started working, and my husband now is the five, fifth generation owner of the olive oil oh, mill. Wow. So this is how it was originally. This is the family. So this is my father-in-law. In that photo, he's four. Is four, the small one? Yeah. yeah, the small boy is four years old now. He's 74. 70 years. Okay, ago. you're very lucky because this is the early harvest olive oil, harvested 10 days ago. Mm. So this is as fresh as you can Almost get. looks like a conditioner bottle. Okay. This is the Coronation variety. This is from our own land, family, family estate. I want you to take your hand like this, in here, close it and cut it. And let's roll it a bit. Usually when we taste the olive oils, we taste them in 28 degrees. This is the perfect temperature because you have the aromas of the olive oil, mm -hmm. you feel them, okay? Uh, extra virgin olive oil has three characteristics. Number one is fruitiness. Fruitiness, you can only sense it with your nose. And fruitiness has a scale from zero to 10 by international standards. Let's put our nose in. Oh. <laughs> I could put this on my bedside <laughs> Guys, I rarely get this when watching movies uh, or when watching videos, but I get a small, you know that like really good feeling um, it's almost like a trance-like feeling. Um, when someone is teaching you something, like... Number one is the olive oil. Close it. I want you to take your hand like this. In here. Close it. And cut it. And let like, just the way she's talking, and then the music there, and the way she's asking to... Do you know what I mean? There... The there's this feeling that and this is important that, 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 that you have to know what I mean. Like when someone's teaching, like if someone's like, like uh, trying out a new like magic card trick on you and they're like just looking at you and they're like, or, or just teaching you something like this. There's that, that, that like tingly feeling. Um, it's an awesome feeling that, that, that happens sometimes. Like when, when you're learning something or when someone's showing you something new in like a very nice way. And I and I got it right there. I, I hope you I hope That's you know right. what I'm talking about. Usually when we taste the olive oils, we taste them in twenty eight degrees. This is the perfect temperature because you have the aromas of the olive oil, mm -hmm. you feel them, okay? Uh, extra virgin olive oil has three characteristics. Number one is fruitiness. Fruitiness you can only sense it with your nose. And fruitiness has a scale from zero to ten by international standards. Let's put our nose in. Oh. <laughs> I could put this on my bedside table. <laughs> Fruity, fresh. Nice. The Coronaki variety has the fresh cut grass as a characteristic. Yeah, okay. smells exactly like that. This is a fruitiness it's around 6, 6.5. And then, what are the other two characteristics? Bitter, you feel it here, right and left part of your tongue. And spicy, you feel it here when you swallow your olive oil. So it's that movement you do the the oxygen to, yeah to sort of make the olive oil yeah, yes, a yes. brief. So this is when you want oxygen. Exactly. This is the only time where you need a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. You want a fresh and cream mouth, not to be disturbing you, not feeling bad. Good quality bread, good quality olive oil can really make make me blessed, make me feel really good. So nice. Well, you are definitely blessed. No. <laughs> to be doing this. I love it. I love it. Messinia is an endless olive garden as far as you can see. People of this land were called Ilotes. Ilotes. So the host, she's obviously really great, but this woman seems really nice too. This means slaves. They were not really slaves, but they were not fighting. They were producing the food of the area. That's why Euripides has called 
called Ilotes. Endless olive garden as far as you can see. People of this land were called Ilotes. Ilotes means slaves. They were not really slaves, but they were not fighting. They were producing the food of the area. That's why Euripides has called this land as Kali Karpo. Kali, good. Karpo, seed, fruit. So this is the land of the good, good fruit. Seed. No, oh, good seed, fruits. good fruits. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I love that feeling. I like. I really want to. to, to uh, I love watching these videos, especially this. This is one of my favorite ones, just because you know when when the host is always great, and when she meets with someone who's also really great and calming or whatever learning about how, how you made some kind of food you, you recognize and use all the time, but never knew how it was produced. And then at the end, that taste testing, it, was, it just made me feel good. I like that a lot. Um, awesome as always. I forgot I'm so dark up here. Um, see you guys next time.